Welcome to the Amy Television Show. I'm your host, Jason Dowd, and we got a great show for you guys today. And this time, I'm inviting you into my home because it is our Christmas special, and there's no better place to enjoy Christmas than at home with family and friends. So, welcome to my home, everybody, and Merry Christmas. Now, today we have two great guests coming up. Our first guest is Shelly Callahan. Shelly Callahan is from Children Incorporated. I love this organization because what they do is they go out and they help children get basic things that they need, things that we take for granted, which happen to be shirts, pants, shoes, uh, pens, paper, and things that they need for school. And you don't think about how much of an impact that has on a child until you don't have it. Now, by helping sponsor these children, you're actually able to make a difference in them and help nurture and make their educational path prosperous. That's the, that's the mission of Children Incorporated and one I'm very glad to have on. So let's talk to Shelly Callahan now. She's gonna be talking to us about Children Incorporated and how you can help, and this could be a great and cost-effective holiday gift that will go a long way. We have on uh, Skype right now Shelly Callahan. She is from Children Incorporated. And as you know, it is the Christmas time, so this is a special time for giving and, and sh sharing goodwill towards men and stuff like that. But we have a possible alternative to Christmas giving if you want something special that will really make an impact in somebody's life. So welcome, Shelly, to the show. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So kind of tell me a little bit about Children Incorporated. Yeah, Children Incorporated is an international child sponsorship organization. We work in 23 countries around the world, including the U.S., and our goal is to provide children with basic needs, things like food, clothing, school supplies, hygiene items, anything that we see if they are lacking because they are coming from an impoverished household. If they're lacking those things, we want to give them those so that they are have everything that they need to go to school and get an education and give them an opportunity opportunity to succeed. Wow. So where does this work at? Is this worldwide? Is this simply in the United States? We are worldwide. In the U.S., we work in eastern Kentucky. We're in the inner cities of Detroit, Washington, D.C., and New Orleans. Um, we are in uh, countries in Africa, in Ethiopia, and we are in Kenya. We're also in India and Sri Lanka, and we are in the Philippines as well. And we are in a, a very large amount of our sponsored children are in Latin America, so both in Central America and South America. So we cover a, a wide range of countries. So you guys really go into places where there's a lot of poverty, and you really help these kids get things that we take for granted. I mean, when we were growing up, we always had pens and paper and crayons and shoes and pants and shirts and uh, you know stuff to clean our hair with and stuff, and these kids don't have that. So you're actually able to make a really big difference in just some tiny little things that we just take for granted. It's amazing. Absolutely. That's that's our main goal, and I feel the same way. I, it's things that we absolutely take for granted as far as having new school supplies or a new outfit or a pair of shoes, really simple things, but they're actually keeping these children. They're, they're living in such extreme poverty, even here in the U.S., that it's keeping them from going to school. They skip school if they don't have a winter coat because it's too cold. They skip school if they don't have shoes to wear, literally. Um, they're not going to do well in school if they don't have the school supplies. So the projects that we work with are, are, are public schools within the U.S. They're orphanages and child care centers and schools abroad. And um, we have volunteer coordinators that are working specifically with individual children and making sure that they are providing them with exactly the resources that these children are, are lacking. So it's really incredible. You know, I remember getting my new shoes and new shirt and outfit for school that everybody else had and wanted, and it was a big deal for us. You know, it was a big deal for me. And I can only imagine what it's like to them when they don't have that stuff and how, how much more important it is to them. It's a big deal. It goes beyond just providing these resources for the children. It gives them a sense that someone cares about them. It gives them a sense of pride. It gives them... Um, the confidence that they need when they have a new outfit or a new pair of shoes, they have a book bag, just like all the other children. 
um, they're going to, it's going to really motivate them to go to school to perform well. It's hard to fathom this problem occurs right here in the U.S. where we have a multitude of riches. It does happen, though, but it's something that you would expect from a third world country or something, but not here in the United States. Yeah, I, I agree. It is amazing. I've spent a lot of time in eastern Kentucky visiting with our sponsored children, and it is really amazing just the level of poverty that is there um, that might look a little bit different than you're going to see in poverty in underdeveloped countries, not like in the U.S., but but what's happening for the children is the same no matter where it is in the world. When they don't have the basic necessities that they need, uh, they're, they're not going to school, they're not getting education, and they're not getting a chance to have a better life and to break the cycle of poverty and do better for themselves than the, than the poverty that they're coming from um, within their own family. So how do you help them? Is it just with clothes and school supplies, or do you help them with vaccines and, and other stuff like that? Because, you know, you do need vaccines to go to school, and sometimes that can keep you out if you don't have them. Do you help with that, too? Um, as far as the health that we look at, we, we, we support children with um, hygiene items, mostly. So it's making sure that they're, you know, clean and healthy, um, deodorant, you know, toothpaste, uh, lots of different things, even even things like laundry detergent to take to take home so they can wash their clothes. Um, we do support individual children if they if they need things such as um, eyeglasses. We we prepare children when they when they have teeth that have are broken. We we were able to do things like help them with that. Not specifically like medications or ongoing care, um, but as individual circumstances arise that is related to their health and well-being, we absolutely do help them out. So the alternative Christmas gift here is to help these kids out, which can make a huge difference in their lives, even if it's a monetary donation. So how can someone help? Yeah, there's a couple different ways that we can do that. Um, I have... I love our little ornaments that we have here in our office that are um, hanging on our tree as examples of children that are waiting to be sponsored. Sponsorship is $28 a month. It's a great thing to do with your own family members or yourself, or it's also something that you could give as a Christmas gift is to sponsor a child. That's a long-term commitment for some people that they might not be interested in because we, we the idea of sponsorship is that you would you would sponsor a child for many years. But other things that you can do that are of great help is we have a lot of special funds where you could give a one-time monetary donation. $10 buys a mosquito net for a child that's going to keep them healthy in places like Kenya and in India, just keep them from mosquito-borne illnesses. Uh, Donating to either our U.S. feeding programs or international feeding programs those buy meals for children. A one-time donation will buy meals for children or send food home with children on the weekends when their families don't have enough money to afford to buy food. Um, we do have our other one-time donations go to things that I was saying just um, when certain circumstances arise that are unexpected for families. Um We've supported when they have uh, natural disasters and flooding so we can help them clean their homes, get new bedding and and new clothes. So uh, everything is – it's really amazing what Children Incorporated does as an organization and any, any amount of a donation, um, no amount too small or big, really goes to helping children and their families in really amazing ways. Now let's clarify this because I know someone out there might ask, what if they wanted to sponsor that little boy, say, in the middle ornament there? Can they just choose a specific child that they want to sponsor? And second part of this question, this is not adoption, right? No, this is this is different. This is just sponsorship. So if you were to sponsor a child, it's twenty eight dollars on a monthly basis, and that those funds go directly to our coordinators who then purchase items for the child. So you're, you're sponsoring them, you're supporting their needs. Um, they are, uh, attending daily, you know, the school, the child care center, where they're at and being monitored. So you're really helping them. You're welcome to, we encourage that you write them letters and, you know, tell them about yourself, ask them about themselves, encourage them to do well in school. So the sponsorship is an option, and then the one-time donation that you can make uh, on our website um, goes to 
uh, the additional needs of children or some of the special things we do like the mosquito nets or the additional feeding programs. And then sometimes that's also helping to support children that are waiting for sponsors, but that need help right you know, more immediately. So what if my child needed this program? How could I sign them up? Is it even possible? We, um, so if your child, if, if you had, if you had someone in mind or a child or someone that you knew that would, could benefit from having a sponsor, is that? Yes. So we work with volunteer coordinators in our nearly 300 projects around the world and they are school administrators, they're resource center coordinators. They're already working closely with the children. So we actually don't take sponsorship requests directly to our to our office it goes through our coordinators and they're already with the children the reason that we do that is because if it's the child is already in the school we can closely monitor to make sure that it's not just about getting them what they need that's very important but the but our focus is getting what they need so that they then are are getting an education so in that way you know we can make sure that they're getting what they need and they're going to school um, so that it all kind of pairs together because we really feel that without that educational component of the children doing well in school, that they're really not going to succeed. Sure. The most important question right now is how do we find you to make these sponsorships or don donations to make these children's lives possible? Yeah, the easiest way to find us is go online and to our website, which is www.childrenincorporated.org. It's spelled out. And when you're on our website, you can find out more information about all of the countries we work in. You can browse through the, the countries to look and see the profiles of the children while you'll, you'll see their interests. And if you are compelled to sponsor a child in a certain area, maybe because at one point you lived in Kentucky or at one point you went on vacation, to Guatemala and maybe it just made you, you know, feel more compelled to do that. You can definitely choose a child based on that location. You can also browse our special funds and find out for more more information about those on our website. We support tutoring programs. Um, as I said, we we buy mosquito nets and feeding programs. So we we have a we have a lot of different varieties for whatever people are compelled to do. Well, thank you for coming on, and I really hope that we can help you make a difference in their lives, become more rich and rewarding and beneficial to them, and help them grow into great young adults. Thank you so much. All right, guys, we will be right back after these messages, and we got more, so don't go anywhere. Limo Bob builds, sells, and rents the world's finest, longest, and most exotic limousines in the world. We provide every imaginable vehicle from a four-passenger town car to a ten-passenger Bentley Rolls and a Hummer for 20. We even have a one-of-a-kind 727 jet limo. And we offer a complete consulting package where Limo Bob comes to your location and shares three decades of experience in three days with you. Call 708-945-LIMO and visit LimoBob.com. Welcome back, everybody. We have Emily Sabisha on. She is part of Four Day Weekend, a improv group out of Texas. I love this group, and every time they come on, I have a lot of fun. Now, Emily is going to be talking to us about the brand new book from the group that is a great present or stocking stuffer for the entrepreneur or artist in your life. And it's a great tool to help you realize and reach your goals and use the idea of yes and. And she's going to explain that a little bit more in detail. But we also have a surprise for her because I'm going to be throwing her into her own improv. She just doesn't know it yet. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting her on like a 10-minute a drill. And we're going to have to ask her all of the favorite things that she loves about Christmas. I'm going to come up with them. She's going to have to fire right off at me. And let's see how she does. So let's go talk to Emily right now. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back, everybody. We have via Skype Emily Savika. She is from the Four Day Weekend. We love talking to this group. They're so much fun. And she is promoting a brand new book for Christmas called Happy Accidents. So we're going to be talking to her about the book. We're going to be talking about it, her improv career, Four Day Weekend, and so much more. I think you guys are going to really love her. So welcome to the show, Emily. How are you doing today? Hey, thanks for having me. I'm good. Can't believe Christmas is around the corner. Oh, I know. It's only about a week away. Can you believe it? 
it's crazy. We've been really busy around the theater and a lot of a lot of holiday shows, as you can imagine, being performers. So it's, it's a busy time. It is. It is absolutely a crazy time. I agree with you 100%. So one of the things I'm really excited about is this brand new book that you have coming out. I think it's going to make a great stocking stuffer. So give us a little bit of an idea of what this book is all about. Oh, you mean this book? Yes, that book. <laughs> yeah, so Happy Accidents. Um, let me tell you a little bit about Four Day Weekend, um, our history, because I think it's interesting and it really plays into why, uh, why the guys wrote this book. So the uh, theater has been around for over 20 years. Um, we had a 2017 or 20th anniversary. Um, and we started in downtown Fort Worth in the middle of Texas, and it was a group of improvisers that put up a small amount of cash, um, and it just started building as uh, the, the place to go and get entertainment in downtown Fort Worth. So on Friday and Saturday nights, we put on an hour-long, two-hour-long shows, um, and it's completely improvised, so we're actually going into the audience and talking to people, learning a little bit about who they are, and then improvising around their life. Um, you might see a song about somebody, you might see scenes. So it's really, really fun. Every single show is completely different. And the way we do that is through improvisation. And that takes a lot of really great um, active listening. It takes a lot of support within the ensemble. And so the, the guys that created this theater have really been building this business based off of those key philosophies. Um, and the number one philosophy of improv is called Yes And, which is the act of listening and building. Um, so that's what they did with this book. Um, it's written by David Wilk, David Ahern, and Frank Ford, three of the founders of 40 Weekends. Um, and it's a really great story because they they tell how they were able to be, you know, three comedians in the middle of Texas and, and build this business that took them all the way to performing for presidents, um, per performing on USO tours, a lot of great opportunities that they would have never had had they not utilized these philosophies. So they put the philosophies into the book. Um, there's some actual practical things that you can do along the way while you're reading it. Um, so you're actually getting to dive in and improvise yourself within your life or your business. Um, and you learn about how they've utilized all these skills and, and how we are now the 20 year old business that we are. So how did you get yourself started into improv? Uh, yeah, so I started um, as a student at Forty Weekend um, almost 10 years ago. And I was um, just finishing up college. I thought, well, this is something kind of interesting and fun to do. So I, uh, I started taking classes, and I got really hooked. Um, and then once I was done, I actually ended up moving to Chicago. Um, Chicago is the birthplace of improvisation. Um, a couple of the guys have actually been through some of the training programs in Chicago. So I went out that direction um, and studied at the Second City and I.O. and some other comedy institutions and knew kind of in my heart that coming back to Texas and working with the guys was um, was important to me. So it's very full circle. What do you like most about improv? I like the camaraderie and actual collaboration. Um, I've worked in many different companies, um, large companies, small companies. And I think the really interesting part is everybody thinks that they collaborate. Um, but really, truly working with people that use the yes uh, and mentality, it, it's just refreshing because everybody's perspectives are honored. So um, even if I don't have the best idea, we're all going to be working together to create something really interesting. So we do that in our corporate work, and we do that on stage for our public audience as well. So this is really kind of a business and an act at the same time, which is kind of interesting. So how how does the, how can you apply this to your business? If you have, if somebody has a business, uh, you know, professional in their in their in their families. Yeah. So I mean, the the basis of improvisation being yes and is really taking things that come to you and and they might be negative and being able to what we call yes and them to a positive place and that can happen in um, communication with coworkers. That can happen as you lobby for a better position within your company or even communicating with your family. It's ways to do it, which is constructive and positive, um, and being able to feel a little bit in control, but then also knowing um, when just to take the leap. Because when we start to foster um, an, an environment of support, then we're able to take more risks. And so that's actually why I love working with these guys and being at this company is because even though we take risks, we're all doing it together. Um, and so it's by fostering that communication and that environment that we're able to to take the big leaps. 
And so it's kind of teaching people to be able to do that in their own work lives as well. That's very interesting. And, you know, I love that philosophy of yes and. And, you know, even if it's not just a book, you can give the person a gift of challenging themselves and going after whatever they want, whatever they believe in. Because a lot of times we we tend to say, well, I can't do this. Or they get, we get scared, you know? I mean, especially if we're out of our comfort zone. And there's no bigger place out of your comfort zone than an improv. So, I mean, because you don't know what's coming up. There's no way to prepare for it. It's just thrown at you. You've got you to have a lightning fast reflex and come back with a, with a, with a uh, continuation. So um, what would you give, what type of advice would you give to somebody that would like to try something but doesn't believe that they can? Yeah, that's a great question. I think that the number one thing, whenever people come up to us after a show and say, I can't do this, you guys are so fast. I always try to tell them, you improvise every day. We're improvising this conversation. We have those muscles. We just have to work them. So we're not perfect. That's why we practice. That's why we have the corporate work and we bring it to large corporations, um, Southwest Airlines, Hilton Hotels. I mean, we work with big companies on communication and team building. But the reason why we're doing that is because we know it's a muscle you have to work. You can't just go to the gym and then give up, you know. Um, so I would say to people that are maybe a little timid or think that they can't do it, um, it's just getting out there and putting yourself in the uncomfortable place and realizing that you have uh, support around you. Nobody wants you to, to fail. Um, anyways, you know, one of the things that I think that people forget is that we, nobody wants you to fail. I guess, mm -hmm. I guess your enemies would, but nobody really wants you to fail. And mm -hmm. if you try, people will, will give you their 100% support. But you got to show you got to show some type of passion for it and, and and attempt to do it. So, how did you? What, how did how was the reception? Is this something that you, you realize that you know is, I'm going to be okay? Nobody's going to want me to fail. I, I think I'm, I think we're, we're going to be just fine. Yeah, it's really interesting. Um, whenever I have, let's say I'm doing a corporate keynote and I have Ted from accounting come up and improvise with me, that's really scary for Ted because Ted thinks he's going to look stupid and. This is something really scary for him. But what I try to teach people and what we understand is this is a this is the lowest stakes. We're making things up. Nobody's gonna make fun of them. It's just we're having fun with it and so we're introducing a sense of play. And once they're able to let the guard down and, and through humor be able to, to move around in that space that before they were uncomfortable now they're feeling better. Um, whenever let's say Ted does some sort of improv activity, I throw it to the audience that was watching it and ask you know, were you judging him? Were you were you thinking every answer he came up with was wrong? No, it's it's Ted that's going to judge himself. And that's what we do. We're always judging ourselves. And we don't realize truly the natural amount of empathy that is out there, whether it's with our coworkers or even strangers, that they don't want us to fail. So if you put that in your head and, again, work that muscle and build that confidence, shy people, people that don't enjoy being in front of crowds are able to get up and communicate effectively. So now I want to do something a little fun with you based around Christmas. We're going to do a little improv together. And everything I'm going to be doing, you just first thing that comes out of your mouth, tell me what it is. And it's all going to be based on Christmas. So you ready to do this? First Christmas memory. Uh, my brother got a Knight Rider car. <laughs> first Christmas present that you remember that you really wanted that you didn't get. Uh, I really wanted my own phone line for my room. <laughs> didn't get it. Kids these days. <laughs> Favorite Christmas movie? Oh, Christmas Vacation. Oh my God, Clark Griswold. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite Christmas Carol? Christmas Carol? Yes. Um. Oh, deck the halls with uh, the holly. La 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 la. Because I I just can follow along a lot of things. Favorite Christmas cookie? Oh, ooh. You are asking this. Hard hitting questions. I would have to say, I like a snickerdoodle. Mm -hmm. Snickerdoodles are good. You know, yeah. when I was when I was growing up, my favorite thing was the gingerbread bear. My mom hated making them because it takes so long to make them. But is I couldn't eat it. We didn't have the gingerbread man. We had a little bear, so they had little eyes, raised eyes. And stuff. My favorite, my favorite thing every year. Specific too. I'm sure your mom really loved that. <laughs> <laughs> and favorite, uh, your favorite Christmas tradition with your family. Oh, goodness. Um, I love Christmas Eve because that's when we start to bug my mom and dad 
uh, to open one present and they never let us do it, but we bother them every time. Um, and I just love that back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> and your favorite Christmas day side dish for your meal? Oh, my mom makes this, um, it's like a sausage and it's got bread in it with spinach, some sort of casserole that is out of this world. I don't need, it doesn't have a name, we just know it's the casserole. Turkey or ham? <laughs> oh, for Chris, I, I'm more of a turkey gal. It's something about the hot ham water that grosses me out. I just, <laughs> I'm a big fan. <laughs> And the the weirdest present you ever got, and you just had to say thank you. <laughs> oh, um, when I was in my early twenties and single, a guy uh, had sent me a lovely um, thing of flowers to my office, and it was around Christmas time. And I got it, and I thought, well, this is weird. And it was sitting on my desk because it was actually um, a, a centerpiece with big candles, and they got the order wrong. So instead of sending me flowers, he sent me a massive. Like religious centerpiece because they sent me the wrong thing. <laughs> Here's the thing I've ever received on Christmas. Well, improv over. You did a great job, and uh, uh, it, it's fun. Yes, you passed. It's fun to learn about you a little bit with that. Show us the book uh, one more time and tell us how they can get it and the entire title. Yes. So it's Happy Accident. Uh, Happy Accident: The Transformative Power of Yes and at Work and in Life. Um, we're really excited about this book. Again, it's a really fun story. We're excited to share our story about it. You can find it at Amazon. Um, search for Happy Accidents. Again, it's by um, David A. Hearn, David Wilk, and Frank Ford. Um, we hope you you get it and enjoy it as a stocking stuffer and share it with friends and family because it's a good uh, it's a good compendium piece to learning more about improv and just being a better uh, listener and communicator. Well, thank you for coming on and sharing this, and I hope people will go out and buy this as a stocking stuffer for their loved one, the business professional, the person that loves it. Whatever it is with, with comedy, there's various, various aspects of it, and thank you for being a part of this uh, Christmas special with me. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Nice to meet you. You too. The AMFM 24-7 Roku channel broadcasts all of our shows on demand. To ensure reliability, we store and stream our content on the same servers as Netflix and Amazon. Our Roku channel is free to use, and anyone owning one of the more than 10 million Roku devices can watch our channel at no cost whatsoever. If you have a television show or are thinking about producing a show, you can be a part of AMFM 24-7's Roku channel. Watch our great shows on your Roku device. It's free and more reliable than cable TV. Welcome back everybody. We are about ready to close out the show. I hope you had a great time with us today. And I also thank you for the year of support that you've given us. And we're gonna continue into 2018, taking you to some great places, meeting some great people, and trying some new experiences along the way. Now, if you wanna check us out, all you have to do is go to our website, www.theamemagazine.com. You can check us out on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash the AME Experience. Twitter, which is at Dowd Studios. We're on Instagram and Snapchat which is my name, Jason Dowd. And from my family to yours, Merry Christmas and have a happy new year. And we will see you again in 2018. So let's see you on the road and keep those creative juices flowing. Like, OMG, you were on TV and junk. 